Hi, I'm Vishal Yadav and you are listening to Female Cricket Podcast. Now this is a podcast about some of the lesser known and unheard stories from the world of women's cricket. Every week I'll be joined by female cricketers and bring to you their story, their struggles and together we shall relive beautiful moments from the journey. This podcast is an initiative by Female Cricket, a platform that aims to promote and publicize women's cricket around the world. So, what are you waiting for? Subscribe to a podcast, plug in those earphones, pour yourself some tea or coffee or whatever you like and enjoy these beautiful stories. Today on the Female Cricket podcast, we have got a cricketer from Chandigarh, Punjab, Tanya Bhatia, also known as Pocket Dynamite. We'll get into the details, but before that, uh, let's quickly jump to where it all started the childhood the early cricket days of tanya bhatia so actually i was uh, four years old when i was already playing cricket in the colony lane in mm-hmm. coin okay from there it started so i was very young when i started okay okay and also for you i, I think your dad has played good level of cricket i think he was also probable for one of the ranji team so i come from a cricketing family okay. like my father and uncle both used to play cricket and mm-hmm. they were wicket keeper batsmen so therefore okay. the okay. love for the game was already in the family amazing and then yeah so my father seeing my keen interest in the game uh-huh. okay. he decided me to put in a put me in a camp and uh, took me to yograj sir's academy okay so okay. from then on i think there was no looking back okay and yograj sir basically the father of uh, indian legend yograj singh right. Okay. Well, we'll get into this this part of your journey, this phase of your journey where you enrolled in a cricket academy. And before that, uh, were there any uh, childhood memories of you playing gully cricket, or when did your father realize that you know my my daughter has uh, sort of an inclination towards this game? Actually, I've I've, uh, I've not played much of gully cricket, but yeah, from my initial stage only, uh, I was mm-hmm. like very much interested in cricket. Mm-hmm. and then uh, but he never used to like that you know me playing just for time pass and all okay. that so okay. so see he said better than you know i'll put you in an academy uh-huh. than you know you wasting time here uh-huh. um, so from there it started tell me about your siblings were they also into cricket what was their interest like no my uh, actually my brother also plays cricket in okay. fact he is a wicket keeper too oh so, wow <laughs> But my sister, uh, she's a lawyer, so she okay. was uh, never into sports. So when when you when your dad saw that your elder sister is not taking interest, so was that the reason why he started, you know, sort of pushing you to to take up the sport? Because eventually it was his dream, right, to play for India, to play for the country. It, it, he was he was like, so it's up to you. So he mm-hmm. never forced me for anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was just my mother initially. She was. Uh, she was always little uh, reluctant to you know mm-hmm. that uh, about my future so as parents they always wanted me to have a secure life they thought so they thought education was you know quite secure in terms of everything uh, that is why my mother was very protective and was making sure that i focus more on academic which i feel is very common in parents i think later on uh, my father was the, like that time he was the main decision maker that you know it's okay if she wants to play Mm. and put put her in an academy and you know then we'll see because i was really young so i was 8 actually okay so, so, yeah. so at 8 you basically went ahead and got your, yourself enrolled in this academy you think so i was the only girl i think there were 200 to 300, 300 boys so uh, initially people couldn't recognize me because i literally used to look like a boy and had really short hair so it was really funny everyone do you have any early memories of uh, you know watching cricket uh, with your family especially with your dad uh, back then when you were very young honestly that time i used to hate watching cricket even i used to okay. uh, i used to you know not yell at my father but i used <laughs> to always uh, <laughs> keep taunting him and that time i never used to like watching cricket oh, i it? never used to watch i oh. only used to i only like playing i never used to watch So I was into a lot of those dramas and daily soaps back then, and would spend a lot of uh, my time watching TV. And uh, uh, at once, I was so much into the sorty zindagi ki that uh, my act, my teammates actually started, you know, referring me as referring to me as Prerna. 
which was very funny. <laughs> okay. And I was so much into that drama. Okay. Into our actually went into that character and we started <laughs> behaving like that. So just to, you know, make Got it a lot. Okay, okay. I think, see, most of us would not admit to this, but uh, uh, most of the Indian girls and boys, they grew up watching mm-hmm. these serials and these mm-hmm. shows on Star Plus and ZTV. Because they My don't... My favorite was MT. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Let's get back to cricket again. Uh, mm-hmm. Which year was this when your father actually realized that this girl has potential and maybe, you know, I should get her enrolled in a cricket academy? Uh, when I was... Uh... when i was 8 so we started then uh, i practiced for 3 years so when i was 11 uh-huh. so the first time uh, i gave trials for punjab so from there the journey started and the trials were for under 19 teams under 19 yeah. so uh, so tanya what age did you realize mm-hmm. that cricket is your calling and you have to make it to the indian side uh, yes uh, it was there in my mind you know that i have to play for the country mm-hmm. because uh, i was always passionate towards mm. cricket mm. but then back then i think there was no under 16 no under 23 mm. so it was like only under 19 and senior team which was mm. very difficult because back then uh, punjab team like they were really strong senior team so it was okay. really difficult for me to make a cut into the senior team you know just like that so in my head it was like i have to perform really well so but then i was just uh, in under 19 so i was mm. enjoying enjoying the process of it Okay okay what what about your studies your your academics uh, how did you cope up with that because playing cricket i think it it becomes a, a bit rigorous uh, and okay. you've got to manage so many things that's what most of the cricketers have told me what was it like for you how did you manage so although my uh, main focus was on cricket but yet uh, i never took my studies lightly mm-hmm. i was uh, actually good in studies and you know managed always to get good grades because for me it was equally equally important i always want to see cricketer yes but i think i always wanted to be uh, side by side well educated too okay and i still remember i uh, missed my i think one nca camp mm-hmm. uh, because of my 12th exam okay okay yeah so i think it for me it's equally important because whenever i come back from uh-huh. uh, i do miss my exam sometimes but then mm-hmm. uh, whenever i come back whenever i'm at home so i make sure i you know write my exam okay so, okay so school and colleges you know my college so i think they are very cooperative in terms great. of all this great great the other day while talking to herleen even she also revealed us that uh, when she was, she was very good with studies uh, and she also i think scored 80% in in her 12th both uh, what what was it like for you uh, how much did you score in 10th and 12th I think I remember that time it was CGPA and I scored eight point four in ten. And this is out of uh, out of ten. So that oh, wow. time it was only CGPA. Wow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that time there were no uh, percentage and all of that. Okay, okay. And about what about your twelve boards? Twelve, I think um, it was a little less. I scored I think seven point eight that time. I if I am not wrong. Okay, okay. Never mind. I you were juggling with a lot of things back then, so <laughs> yeah. uh, we we can sort of get discount you on the numbers there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let Let's quickly talk about your domestic days, your under nineteen days. Uh, I think initially when you started off, uh, you wanted to be a wicket keeper. So, uh, my father wanted me to be a pace bowler, and okay. and I should do. a uh, bowling but i was uh, always interested in wicket keeping mm-hmm. uh, so i think and also my father was a wicket keeper so i think it's it's very natural that i took mm-hmm. to wicket keeping like mm-hmm. a fish to water yeah but, uh, so then then dad went to you know yoga sir and mm-hmm. actually they were having a laugh so mm-hmm. sir said uh, mm-hmm. are isko koi baat nahi mm-hmm. let her keep anyway she is short mm-hmm. so he was he was making fun of my height okay then um, Anyway, she is short, so let her keep only. How can okay. she bowl? Okay. So, okay. And it turned out to be a blessing in disguise. Yeah, right, true that. He always knew that I'm uh, into wicket keeping. He always okay. took my side. Uh, there's one incident when you got a chance to meet uh, uh, Adam Gilchrist. Tell us more about this particular incident. Um. Uh, so uh, I was I was always fond of him. I've always liked him. You know, I've. So I always wanted to meet him, and uh, back then he used to play for Kings Eleven. 
Okay. So they were practicing uh, in PCS uh-huh. stadium. So I was behind my father. They uh-huh. were practicing. I think uh, it was around I think eleven in the uh-huh. night. Okay. So they came for practice under lights. Okay. So I was behind my father. I called up my coach, uh-huh. uh, and you know, all sort of like I really convinced them. Uh-huh. Uh, so they they decided that okay, chalo, uh-huh. you come and uh, uh-huh. you can meet him. Uh-huh. So then that's when I actually met him, and I was literally shivering. I was a kid, and but but then he was really nice. He was so down to earth. Okay. He saw me standing there because I was I was continuously staring at him. <laughs> I didn't didn't utter a word. I was just staring at him. So he himself, you know, he came up to me and he was like. Wow. Then he only asked me, "Hi, how are you? What is your name?" And I told mm. him that I'm a wicket keeper. Mm. Uh, so he was really, you know, he was very nice. He was really impressed that, you know, uh, first of all, in a very early age, she started playing cricket, mm. and she's mm. a wicket keeper too. Mm. Mm. So I think, yeah, very sweet of him. So one more moment, one more special moment, I would like to share with you all. Mm-hmm. Is, uh, over a period, I always wanted to grow like him as a cricketer, as a leader, and also as a human being. I okay. always look up to him, and it was such a memorable moment. And after 14 years, in the recently concluded 2020 World Cup in Australia, he walked up to me to appreciate my work for once. For once, I felt very proud of myself because for the person whom I look up to, to walk up to me and appreciate my game means a lot to me. Uh, wow. As I said earlier, that you know, as a eight-year-old, when I met him, never did I think once that I would be appreciated by the man himself. Who I've looked up to all these years. Wow, amazing, amazing. Any other wicket keeper that you admired growing up? Adam Gilchrist and I think, I think Taylor, Tara Taylor. Okay, okay, okay. Right. And in fact, on YouTube also, I only used to look, uh, I only used to watch uh, Gilchrist videos only. Uh, were you always uh, an opening bat, uh, Tanya? Because you know, in the international circuit, we have seen you shuffling your batting position. uh of course that could be a coach call that could be management call uh my question to you is back then when you started in your domestic circuit uh, in in your domestic journey which batting position did you play the most and which one did you enjoy the most two things i think obviously without a doubt um, top order and because i used to you know i love playing with the new ball so mm-hmm. i think i was i was naturally aggressive so mm. because of my nature also so it used to reflect on field Okay. So I loved playing against pacers. So for me, it was really natural. I always loved batting top the order. I okay. think I've always batted for Punjab also. Uh-huh. Amazing. So the opening number three, max number four. That's it. Okay. As for the team requirement. Where where do you think you get your aggression from? Your aggressive batting style. Uh, is it because of the Punjab, or is it something else? I think else? it's something uh, wrong with the blood. <laughs> I think it's something that comes really quite natural okay. and, because my nature is also like that. Super <laughs> so, aggressive. Um, super aggressive and you know typical Punjabi. <laughs> uh, so it's like, okay, okay. But I'm I'm a I'm a weird Punjabi in the sense. <laughs> What does that? I am a super weird Punjabi in the sense. Uh, like I am aggressive and all of that, but. On field, off field, I am this very shy person, like very shy. Okay. And uh, that is why when people ask me to dance, I I'll not dance. <laughs> I'll just shut my mouth and sit. So I'm very, I'm actually totally opposite. That is why people, you know, they ask me, are you are you actually a Punjabi? So we doubt. So yes, I am Punjabi, opposite. but with conditions. There are. But with conditions. <laughs> so on the... field, I'm like that. I'll walk like that. You know, I'll play like that. I'll play, but then uh, off the field, I'm totally off it. Okay, okay. Growing up, how was your uh, how was your relation with your siblings? I think they were very understanding since childhood because they all wanted me to you know play for the country one day, mm-hmm. and so they knew the process is going to be really difficult. Mm-hmm. They were with me. I was in uh, especially uh, it's, it's like I come from a sports background. So Correct. they completely understand my routine and all of that. So they used to give me space also mm-hmm. because whenever I used to come back, I will. Like, I used to get really tired. And True. So they used to give me space, and but then um, I have always had this really good, great bond with both of them. So they, yeah. Okay. Okay. What I've also read about your journey, Tanya, is that your mother has played a very crucial role, uh, and I want to talk about that. 
uh, but before that was your mother into any any sort of sport back when she was young and back when she was in school college no no not at all <laughs> she was okay. she was always um, uh, she never she was never into uh, any sort of sport she never liked imagine okay so i think okay. it's yeah. now i want you to uh, take us deep into the contribution that your mother has uh, in your cricket journey So actually my um, dad used to you know travel a lot because of his work okay and and he was actually out in like there was a period of uh, 10 years he was out okay for 10 long yeah. years okay 10 long years so in between uh, it was my mother who mm. then took charge of things and she mm. would take me to the ground for practice morning and evening mm. and also you know she was the one who would help me uh, follow my routine mm. so my mother more than you know she has always been a friend to me and was a pillar of support okay amazing so she always you know gone out of her way to uh-huh. do things for me she never used to go to her relatives so this is of my practice correct and, you know she made sure that i don't miss anything so everything is like proper on spot so okay and she did not come from a sports background so i'm sure it must be a, a, a new challenge for her as well yes it was but then i think um, I'm the most lovable child. Uh, she, I mean, she used to really. She did a lot of sacrifices, like everyone does. Okay. But uh, she did go you know, out of her way to okay. help my dream okay. come true. Uh, uh, Tanya, why your brothers and sisters a bit jealous that you are getting all the love and attention <laughs> at home now? Honestly, yes, they were a little initially. Okay. Because he only used to focus on me. Okay. Um, so I think my uh, brother and sister to now still still oh. she actually taunts her. Okay. For you only she matters. Mm. So but then later now they realize that you know why she used to do it. Okay. They uh, the all the hard work she had put in. Mm. So now they are they realize you know okay she has worked hard equally. True. So I think they're really, they're very proud of me. So now it doesn't matter. So sometimes this these things still comes up. Okay. When when was the last it came? <laughs> well, my sister keeps bringing it up. I mm. think two days back only. Okay. Because now it's like uh, first, like I come after. Sometimes I come after like two long months. Her focus is only on me. Mm-hmm. You know, she she True. never uh, actually. She says that okay, you don't have to get out of the bed also. I get you everything here. <laughs> wow, so, so sweet. Okay. So yeah, so she pampers me a lot. So that is why I really enjoy being at home. Okay. I don't see any point why your brothers and sisters shouldn't be you know jealous of you. <laughs> you totally deserve that. <laughs> but then, um, but then now too she gives her like equal time to you know True. to both of them. Now she has no option, right? Now you. Now she has no other option. <laughs> whenever I go, she'll give. But whenever I come, mm. then I get all the pampering. Okay, okay. So tell me what what exactly is happening in the lockdown? How how is it treating you? Initially, uh, when we came back um, after the World Cup, of course it was a relief because uh, it was a long, long tour, and uh, yeah, yeah. so I was really happy that okay, I'll get some time to spend hmm. at home. Hmm. But then uh, I didn't expect that it would be this long. <laughs> but uh, I think it was it was uh, I think it was really nice because I I actually spent time with the, the entire family. Correct. They were also happy, and okay. Um, okay. like I also introduced myself to yoga. I was uh, actually initially I was never really a big fan of yoga until I started practicing in the recent time. Oh wow! So that I should, you know, actually everything is so monotonous. Correct. Uh, so training and all of that. So I thought, okay, let me give time. Initially, I was giving time to yoga, hmm. and training in the evening, then okay. family time. Okay. Then gossip time with family, so it was uh, all the mixture, everything. Okay. So I was trying to catch up with a lot of shows which I missed during my busy schedule, and also uh, you know I'm spending time at home reading books, making my own coffee is something which I've never done before. Okay. So uh, you talked about yoga. Uh, are you learning from somewhere, or is it just the YouTube videos that you're watching? So once I got back from the World Cup. I wanted to try something different from the usual routine, so I thought I'll try yoga. And uh, luckily, Vanita's sister Kavita, uh, who is a yoga instructor, designed yoga for me in such a manner which is very interesting and intense. And just so you know, Vanita is uh, who has already represented India and now played for Karnataka state. 
So I think she helps me a lot. Amazing. So Amazing. From there it comes. Tanya, you were consistently performing in the domestic cricket, be it with your batting uh, as well as your wicket keeping skills. Uh, you you made your journey from under 19 Punjab team, then went to the senior side, and then there came a point when uh, sort of things were not going your way, and you were struggling to to find your form. Uh, what was going through your mind back then? How did you sort of you know make a comeback, and how did you take this particular situation? So when I was uh, 11 years old, I was selected for the under 19 Punjab team, and uh, by the time I was 13, I had already made it. No, uh, to the senior team. Correct. And uh, yeah, and uh, at that time, Harmanbi was the captain of the Punjab team. Okay. So she was she was very supportive and encouraged me, um, and that helped me grow. Um, and also, I would uh, like to mention my uh, Punjab coach, Parthi mm-hmm. sir. He he also motivated me throughout. Okay. And uh, he, you know, he also plays a big role in my journey. Lovely, lovely. So uh, by the age of uh, you know 15, everything was happening quickly for me in good time. Okay. Uh, like as I, as I told you, by 11 uh, I was in the under 19. True. Uh, then by 13 uh, I was in the senior team, and um, and by 15, uh-huh. 15, 16 I was in the challengers. Uh, Amazing. The stepping stone to the Indian team. Correct. Correct. Uh, but but who knew that uh, the journey of breaking into the Indian team would hmm. teach me. Uh, some of the biggest lessons of life. Okay. Okay. Um, so okay. I uh, I learned things the hard way. Okay. And then uh, and then I realized that you know talent can only get you so far. Mm-hmm. And if you want to play for your country, mm-hmm. then you really have to put in extraordinary effort and dedication. Okay. Okay. So we talk about the comeback. I think as luck would have it, mm-hmm. I then met Vanita Vyas. Okay. okay. <laughs> so. Uh, so now I think if you've seen her uh, Instagram, um, she's majorly into fitness and you know very particular about her diet. True, 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 true. So she guided me, uh, put me on a strict fitness and a diet regime. Okay. Uh, so as you all know, being a Punjabi, it was very difficult to hmm. get rid of uh, the patana and pizza hmm. <laughs> and all sort of that. Yeah. But, um, she inculcated discipline in me. And okay. you know, not only for fitness, but also for my diet. Okay. So, okay. Uh, so slowly and steadily, uh, my transformation began. Okay. Uh, I even uh, used to go to Bangalore to train, and uh, would go to uh, KOC for skill training along with her. Amazing. So she really helped me throughout because you know I used to stay at her place only. Oh, so, okay. Is it? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I get along with the family also really well. Okay. I think they're very nice. We, I was also really, you know, amazed by her fitness, and you know, hmm. um, she's so dedicated. She's so passionate. So personally, True. I like people who are, you know, really dedicated. She was very career oriented. So okay. I like such characters. Amazing. So that made me, you know, really. Uh, that is, I was. See, as I told you, I'm really shy as a person. Yeah. But then it took me, you know, you know, a lot of courage to go and just speak to her because I didn't know that how she would react to it. Correct. So. But then slowly, slowly we did. Then we started talking because I was I was very keen to know about her fitness and diet. Mm-hmm. So then, but then uh, later I got to know then you know that she is quite friendly. Okay. So so that's when I started talking to her, and okay. then she told me she you know because uh, she was telling me uh, one incident that you know mm-hmm. she uh, once she had uh, Karnataka versus Punjab. Mm-hmm. So she told me that she saw me there for the first time. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we were playing against each other, so she was like, uh, "I've seen that. I think you have, you have so much of talent, so much of potential, uh, and so much of potential. And you know, I've seen you play. Okay. Um, okay. You're actually India material. But then she said, 'But mm-hmm. there's a big mm-hmm. question mark. Mm-hmm. What are you doing? She's okay. like, Why are you? And straight away she was so uh, straightforward.'" Yeah. yeah. Uh, she 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 didn't you know she was not like you know I don't care if she feel bad or not she said I okay. think you really and she talks like that so dude correct you're correct. really wasting your time. <laughs> <laughs> no she's I mean, very she's very, like, very straightforward yeah. I have met her once uh, two qualities right. the two instant qualities that I saw in her was she was very straightforward very upfront right. and secondly she has a very positive aura uh, she gives a lot of right. positive vibes to you. I mean she's very helpful. 
ट So, so which which, when, which year did you play uh, your India A Tanya? Back okay. then, I uh, when I was fifteen, uh, we okay. played against uh, New Zealand in Bangalore. Oh, got India. it, got it, got it. Yes, yes, yeah, there was, was one more tour. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was then. So before that, we played challengers, and I scored some sixty-four uh, uh, against India Blue. Wow. So yeah, so then so then that's what she was, you know, uh, telling me that you know because I think ha huh, she was also there. Okay. Like I've seen you play, uh-huh. and you know I think now you're just wasting your time. Mm-hmm. So then slowly, slowly, because Ash is very helpful. True. She doesn't see you know whether I'm getting any benefit out of it or not. True. Or True. It's like I'm not letting you waste your talent. And when she and then, when she confronted you, when she told you all this, she was part of a different team. She was part of an opponent's team, right? Opponent team, right? Amazing. So, Amazing. Then so that that's our that was our first conversation. So okay. that's how it started. She was like, "Okay, mm-hmm. there are there are many people in life, and they'll they'll come and say, mm-hmm. you know, you're very good, you're very good.' Mm-hmm. But then, uh, very few people that uh, they'll tell you, you know, what it takes to be there. True. Very few people. True. I think, and she's one among them. So okay. I'm always um, always grateful for that. Okay. But, uh, okay. So then, so then that's how it all started. My uh, fitness and my transformation. Okay, okay, okay. Because uh, uh, back in I think eighteen, nineteen, I did see a couple of posts on Instagram of Anita and you, uh, and I was thinking, you know, where this, where did this happen? Uh, because <laughs> you from Punjab, North Zone, she's from South Zone, Karnataka. It's like <laughs> totally poles apart. <laughs> exactly. I never thought I can ever get along with her because her, you know, thinking is so different. So it's just very difficult, you know. Oh, okay okay and none of your school friends are in touch with are in currently in touch with you so now i think after uh, after being on instagram after getting a little famous <laughs> so i think so because People earlier have... i wasn't on instagram okay okay so they are on instagram since childhood i mean i don't know but then i came a little late ah uh, because yeah. you were busy playing cricket right there had nothing to do <laughs> yeah so then later when they got to know then like and we all came in touch and uh, then from there now so like we are friends still cool friends yeah so you you part of the india probable squad for the 2017 uh, yes. and before before this you you told us about uh, the courage and uh, and how you sort of brought your form back by getting a lot into yes. fitness by inculcating yoga habits in your uh, daily routine right yes. uh, yes. when when did you come to know that You are now going to be representing India. So actually, I was um, in the flight, and uh, we had to, you know, report to Delhi for our senior domestic game. Mm-hmm. And as soon as we landed, uh, mm-hmm. I just switched on my phone, and I was literally flooded with messages and missed calls. Okay. Uh, yeah. So though I was aware that you know they're going to announce the score on that particular day, uh-huh. but then, uh, but then I was. I was still, you know, I didn't expect. So it was like, it was, and it's so difficult to put that excitement in words. Yeah. Because true, I true. couldn't believe that it's actually happening. I was alone. I was traveling alone. Uh huh. And uh, so it was. I didn't know how to react. I just, I was, uh, I just called up my parents and <laughs> um, I told them, and uh, and they were, they were equally, you know, excited. But I think we were more than excited. We were really emotional. It was okay. a very emotional moment. So I okay. think that's how that's how I just got to know that okay, chalo. Okay. Who did you call first? Uh, actually, yeah, my entire family was together, but I called up my mother. She was very emotional. She started crying, and my dad, as usual, strict. So he hmm. is like, ah, uh, chalo, ठीक है. एक दिन खुशी मना लो. फिर आगे focus करो. And okay. Said, okay, our dad will let me relax for a day or two. Okay. So he was yeah. always uh, strict and he's very quite funny also. But then everyone was really emotional and it was I think probably the best day of my life. 
so uh, tane you were selected for the for the south africa tour uh, in the in the t20 squad and there were three more people the three more players making their debut uh, on this particular tour with you uh, the team decided to you know conduct an ice break session so that okay. each one of you get to know the team mm-hmm. and there's a funny story here and i want to know that tell, tell me more about it <laughs> oh god actually jemi radha and all we all know that it's quite open they're not at all shy so for them it was nothing yeah. but for me it was a big task because okay. i am very shy and imagine on my first tour i was and i didn't know how to react to me there was mithali di there was harman di jhuler di yeah. and yeah. now like and tushar sir to uh, is uh, he loves taking my case so it's like they, okay. they were aware that i'm very shy okay and you know what they did was uh-huh. they're like chalo tane now uh, uh, in, in our team uh, meeting room mm-hmm. so um, they were all sitting in a circle okay they made me sit in the middle the okay. center i was sitting okay yeah. and they were like tane chalo uh, just uh, just um, give us uh, you know just couple of lines you know in english Mono how no. do you feel about the like playing alongside Um, okay. Such uh, legends and all of that. Oh wow! So I was, so it was, I was only shivering the entire twenty <laughs> minutes. Five, five, seven minutes I wasted. I was, of course, I was so shy. Yeah. You know, everyone is looking at me and they're laughing. <laughs> um, and I was shivering because I was, you know, so it was my first time. Okay. And, uh, I don't know because see, uh, guys in front of me, Mithali is sitting, okay. and I'm. Um, quite a uh, little scared yeah so yeah i yeah. didn't know how to but then uh, and i had uh, i had prepared not a speech but then just uh, four five lines you know mm-hmm. how i felt mm-hmm. coming to the indian side and all of that mm-hmm. so it was but then i somehow i managed to speak for 10 minutes so <laughs> it was funny but then it was yeah <laughs> Okay, and any lines that you remember from from this monologue of yours? Lines. Yeah. yeah. Hi, my name uh, is Tanya Bhajia. I'm from. I like Akali. that only, and then I, 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 then I also said that uh, you know, so oh, it's an you know, it's an honor. I feel so privileged staying alongside <laughs> such legends, Nathali Di, Harman Di, and Neem Chudan Di, and that's how I just went and it is. Okay. They all, as usual, they all started laughing. The moment I started speaking, they all started laughing. <laughs> so they were just having fun. They were they had actually they all had a nice time making fun of me. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. I think Jemmy got away because because of her guitar skills. She just played a yeah, song and was singing skill, guitar yeah. skill. So she she was never this shy. You know, she True. always is quite True. open. She was uh, playing her guitar as usual. She was dancing. Mm-hmm. Even Radha. Mm-hmm. But I can't do that. I don't know. <laughs> I, as I told you, I'm a weird Punjabi. Yeah, you are a beer fan with condition. Yeah, <laughs> right. Okay, okay. So this happened, and uh, you got away with the situation. But there was yeah. another opportunity waiting for you, which was to go and wicket keep. Uh, how how special was that feeling? Uh, were you nervous? Were you anxious? Were you excited? What was that feeling like? Of course, I was really excited. Like as um, like others, even I couldn't sleep that night. Okay. And because I was aware that you know I'm. I'm going to play tomorrow. Tomorrow, game. yeah, yeah. Tomorrow game. So I was excited, but then uh, in that uh, it's very funny because in that nervousness, hmm. I was so anxious. I was so nervous. Hmm. It's like twenty overs. कब चलेगे मुझे? I was thinking, but मुझे पता ही नहीं चला कब चलेगे. Okay. So I was so nervous. So yeah. I was. I had no time. Nothing. I had to, you know, actually think. Okay. Okay. So it's my first game. I I couldn't think anything. I was Amazing. blind. I was so nervous, mm-hmm. but then thank God this time because actually I didn't get much balls. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. Wicket keeping at the stumping may be not at that time. Ah, uh, that time to not come. A couple of uh, games to not come. Great, great, great. So this this uh, your international debut happened uh, the T Twenty Tour. So how did you come to know about your ODI debut and that you'll be now making? And playing for for uh, one day international. I think yeah, just before Sri Lanka tour, uh, hmm. we had challenges. But then actually, I remember uh, it was T20 only. 
but then i uh, actually played really well in the last game also i got quick uh, 15 balls uh, 37 runs and actually nice. i performed quite well with the bat okay so Lovely. you know i was just hoping that you know i mm. might get into the odi squad so i was just hoping and then i made it so mm. i was really happy was the feeling any different uh, uh, than the t20 debut which you made so i think uh, yeah there's a moment in every cricketer's life you know when they realize that they belong to that stage yeah so my defining moment was on my debut tour in sri lanka okay i think it was it was really memorable for me do you remember how much did you score uh, sanya yeah uh, i think it was uh, in sri lanka uh, it was the second match and mm. uh, mithali ji was uh, holding the batting Mm. together uh, we needed a good partnership and quick run okay so in a normal scenario i would have been as usual very nervous yeah. but uh, seeing mithali ji uh, mm. a figure of calm and composure yeah uh, i only felt confident going into the middle like when we, when you are batting with the great mithali raj yeah so you do whatever she says yeah no. and uh, during my partnership with her in sri lanka Mm. uh while i was uh, you know finding it easy mm. to rotate the strike against other bowlers mm. then there comes shashi kala okay so, okay okay so when she was making things difficult for me in the middle and mm. i was actually getting stuck in the crease so then uh, mithali ji walked up to me mm-hmm. and you know she said that try the sweep shot mm. and you won't believe the next ball she bowled i mm. didn't look where it pitched Hmm. how it turned <laughs> blindly blindly i just swept at the ball wow and 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 the ball went to the boundary wow and seeing this <laughs> i mean from far seeing this mithali ji could not control her laughter <laughs> you know she uh, she actually imagine she walking up to me she came laughing at me from the other end to pat my back So I think I don't know how it would sound, but I think it was really funny for me. I think it was the funniest moment. Okay, okay, that's what experience brings to you, right? Like um, it was my first partnership with her, and funniest moment also. I think <laughs> acting on the field. And that was the time when you scored sixty-eight and sixty-six balls. Right, right, that was far. Right. This tour was in was in uh, September. uh the sri lanka tour and in in just a couple of months there was t20 world cup which was scheduled to happen in west indies yeah, yeah? and you also get picked for this for this world cup right right yeah uh what was what was the excitement level like because this was the first world cup uh and you were supposed to travel mm-hmm. all the way to west indies uh, your first time in west indies and to represent your country uh, tell tell us more about this particular experience I think uh, it's, uh, I was uh, by then uh, I was you know I quite settled down in terms of uh, mm. I was in no work but now I was like you know now it's time for me to you know prove mm. that why am I here why do I belong sure. here and sure. uh, I was really looking forward because you know it's first time like yeah. like I was like oh I'm traveling to West Indies yeah. so I was uh, really excited to play there. Mm. and uh, it even you know makes it more special because of the big occasion mm. and uh, i uh, and as a player you know i was feeling that okay chalo i'm evolving in this international circuit sure. and you know every day as a player getting to learn and understand i was getting to learn and understand the game uh, much better Correct. i was really looking forward to the game so 2018 your first your maiden world cup experience um two years later that is 2020 uh mm-hmm. just before all the covid 19 thing happened uh yeah. you were part of this india squad which uh, created history by making it to the finals for the very first time this was yeah. a, this was in australia uh i i won't talk about all the league matches uh, because of the the shortage in time quickly i want to ask you is you had an exceptional time with your wicket keeping what practice did it go in sort of making you uh, a wicket keeper that you are today so uh, the 2020 world cup uh, thing it was another career defining event uh, right since the world cup had good coverage and a lot of people from india uh, were in the world cup yeah. so i got a lot of recognition for my uh, keeping skills yeah. so it all started uh, from the very first match uh, 
where we beat Australia. Yeah. So as you all know, that I was involved in four dismissals, who got behind and do something uh, which got a lot of attention. Correct. It was uh, it was very nice to be appreciated by everyone back in India. And yeah. as we all know, wicket keeping I think is it's the least noticed skill in cricket. <laughs> and true. It true. Was, uh, it was nice that people actually appreciated and took note of my skill. True. Yeah. True. True. It's a thankless job, they say. So I think that's why I said like it's the least noticed skill, but I think uh, the way people appreciate it, you know, and I think I was it was purely I think as I said it was actually another career defining event for me. So true, then, true. Quickly, let me take you to the final of the tournament, to the final day of the tournament. Eighty six thousand one seventy four people in the stadium. So you you go up, you go out to bat at number three. what was going through your mind to be given that responsibility in in such a crucial match so um, of course as we were aware that we were you know chasing the mammoth total. total yeah yeah <laughs> right and so i was my role was you know just to make use of the power play as usual yeah so you you got hit you got injured but then yeah, i got hit on my head actually uh, i was as quite pumped up because um, he uh, We feel it first, so so my keeping, I think it went quite well. It was smooth, so I was quite pumped up. You know, okay. Correct. So whenever I get a chance to bat, you know, I'll make sure that I make a mark. True. So when I went, True. I was I went in with that uh, mindset, but then eventually things didn't turn out well. So yeah. Oh, correct, correct. correct. So then later I realized that okay, there are a lot of positives, you know, to take. Precisely, as coming as coming to that, coming to that. Though we though we lost, but I'm sure there's so many things that you can actually take out from this particular series. Yeah, a lot of positives, and for sure, uh, I actually learned a lot many things, and actually it made me or uh, it helped me grow as a person also, and it evolved me as a player also. For sure. So I think right. So I think I mean, okay. I think Quick, best. quickly, if you have to sum up the overall experience. I think it was. Um, Once in a lifetime opportunity to you know to play such a big crowd. True. But then uh, initially it was after you know uh, when we got to know that okay, eighty six thousand people will be coming, <laughs> so we were little little uh, nervous. But then yeah. I think we were quite pumped up because actually it was final, so we True. forgot True. you know who is watching or who is not. So we were actually focused. That we have to that to win the game. Anya, I've also got a couple of questions from the uh, fans. I've got some really interesting and exciting ones, uh, but nothing can beat this question from from your teammate Jemima Rodriguez, yeah. <laughs> who wants to know how many times do you look into the mirror? <laughs> <laughs> so expected. In fact, you know, before uh, she asking this question, she actually messaged me, "Acha, Anya, when is your uh, that interview coming?" <laughs> okay. I, I wasn't aware that okay she's up to something. Okay, so, okay. Then she also. So actually, uh, so any time that I'm not playing cricket, Jamima, I find a mirror. For <laughs> 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 yeah. what? Yeah. Fine. Now next question is from Abhay. Uh, what's your favorite cuisine? You have got any? Yeah, I love uh, Italian and Chinese. Italian and Chinese. Okay, interesting. Uh, what's your nickname? This question is from Abhay. I mean, my mother calls me Tanu. I mean, T A N U. Tanu or Tanu? How do you pronounce Tanu, it? Tanu, Tanu, Tanu. Tanu. Okay, okay. Tanu or Tani or whatever. My teammates they love calling me Bhatia. I take a lot of pride in that, you know, oh Bhatia, and then they say, oh, uh, Jenny. Jamie will marry but but okay so, but, as expected so, I, I was like as long as you're adding h to it i'm okay <laughs> you know it shouldn't sound vulgar or anything so it's it's like beda and jamie you know they're very good at it they're very good at coming up with names right coming up with names and inventing something or the other <laughs> okay okay Next question is from Vivek Vivek Vijayan. Which bowler from men's cricket would you like to hit a six? That's a funny question. <laughs> And he has very particularly mentioned that from men's cricket. 
फ्रॉम मेंस क्रिकेट या आई आई एक्चुअली लाइक मिचेल स्टार्क हां मतलब रियली लाइक हिम आई एम वेरी फॉन्ड ऑफ हिम ओके चॉइस हो तो ऐसा ही इनफैक्ट सिक्स मारना है तो स्टार्क को मारना है मार उसको मारो क्योंकि क्योंकि सिर्फ सपनों में ही तो मारना है तो अच्छे वाले को मारो ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम अभिनव थोड़ा सीरियस क्वेश्चन है बी प्रिपेयर्ड व्हेन द टीम इज इन बैड शेप हाउ डू यू मेक योरसेल्फ काम एंड हाउ डू यू प्रिपेयर फॉर दैट सिचुएशन सी आई एम बीइंग अ कीपर यू नो आई एम सो यूज्ड टू मोटिवेटिंग ईच एंड एवरी टीममेट आई थिंक I am. I have made myself so much mentally strong with yeah. time mm-hmm. uh, and with the the number of matches I've played. Yeah. So I think now these things. I think it, it doesn't bother me so much. Mm-hmm. So I'm now very well focused because it all comes in the process for every situation. Like I'm prepared, so I okay. make sure that I lift my team next up. Lovely. Whenever the team is down, so I do. The- see, I can't stay uh, serious yeah for a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so because i have to you know i'm a very lively person i don't like to stay quiet especially behind the stumps so it's like i have to do something or the other so i make sure uh, you know whoever is the standing uh, mm. uh, next to you at slips or point mm. or you know i make sure that the quiet lively so uh, radha only stands radha jemmy only comes mm. with me okay. so i think i actually have a great time with them <laughs> jemmy i think our humor only matches quite a lot so, <laughs> okay Even if there is nothing to laugh at, we'll just say something and start laughing. Because there is nothing. अरे देख है वो कैसे कर रहा है? I mean, there's there's nothing. कुछ serious भी नहीं होगा. Okay. कोई joke भी नहीं होगा. कोई हंसी की बात भी नहीं होगी. Hmm. बस कुछ भी पुराना याद करके then we'll start laughing. Even I imitate people sometimes, like only in person. Like, सब किसी को देखते हैं, you know. Hmm. So, hmm. for example, if we're standing on board, so we'll start imitating. Okay. X Y Z player and then we we'll start laughing like that. Okay, interesting. Keep doing this, London. Next question is from Sneha. Are you into TV shows and movies? Oh, always. Okay, always. TV shows. Uh, see, when I'm out, I see I can't watch anything. Hmm, so correct. Hardly I get time. But at home, hmm. I make sure my phone is aside. I keep my phone aside. I okay. don't touch it. I I keep watching TV shows. As I said, I love watching uh, dramas. Hmm. I love Big Boss. I do watch Big Boss. I watch uh, MTV, Brody, Six Villa, mm-hmm. and I watch entire. I mean, I'm too much into TV. I watch Master Chef. Okay. So okay. I watch quite a lot of shows. So. Any 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 recent watch. any recent TV show any recent movie that you have watched? I think I watched uh, Malang. Okay. Okay. This was I, I think. Your Royal Couple. I think it's there on uh, Amazon Prime or Netflix. I'm not sure where. I think yeah, uh, Netflix only it came Netflix. recently. Cool. I watched it, so I quite liked it. There. Okay. Mm. Next question is from Prachi. Yes, <laughs> your, my friend. Your childhood school friend. Uh, <laughs> her question is: Do you keep setting your hair on ground too, like you did, it, <laughs> like you did it in school? Oh. Actually, she shouldn't ask that because she she was the one who used to actually make fun of me because okay. at that time I had short hair. Mm. I had really short hair, and you know, convent school, so I had to put that hair band. Imagine I don't have hair. Correct. Still, I have to put a that hair band. So it is. Then they they all used to make fun, and now so I think um, <laughs> as I said that yes, Prati, I keep setting my hair whenever I get time. Because because of, uh, because of the because of the sweat helmet, I hmm. think I have to keep setting it. Okay. Secretly, I do that. Okay. Okay. What What's your uh, favorite Bollywood movie? Now that I know that you're so much into Bollywood movies. I think it keeps changing with my mood, but uh, like recently I watched Malang. Hmm. I liked it. Hmm. I don't remember much. I don't actually remember movies, but then I I actually liked Dangal. Uh, I I like that. Uh, I don't know if you remember that movie that Jo Jitra was in it. Yeah, of course, Amir Khan. Ah, uh, I mean, I think I I've actually watched it thousand times, and I would still love to watch it. Amazing. And I think it's an amazing. Movie. It's a, it's a beautiful movie for sure. Yeah, I mean, it still you know inspires me. You know, I still get butterflies. You know, watching the last scene. Okay. So, okay. I think 
even my father whenever that dangal movie comes yeah he like he'll keep watching it and you know then he taunts me uh, when um, amir says you know uh, that medal paid par nahi lagte acha we have to earn okay okay with the uh, hard work and dedication huh. so he'll huh. keep whenever that scene comes he'll call me then he you know or sort of reminds me okay yeah. amazing next next question is from diksha uh diksha says i am 22 years old and i want to pursue career in cricket now can i start and if yes where do i start from i would say um, i think there is no uh, certain age to you know start cricket hmm. but yes there are uh, quite a lot of advantages if you start early Correct. and now if you wanna start i think uh, if you really uh, love this game if you are if you're really passionate towards cricket i think there is no harm in starting at this age as long as you're consistent with your routines and fitness you need yeah. proper guidance at this age yeah. so i think uh, i think you should uh, if you i think if you really love it i think you should give it a shot amazing amazing i think this is a very common question that we get uh, uh, tanya okay, even i get so true true and you have be- do, do. beautifully explained it in in few words that you okay. got to one is that the early mover always has the advantage they have advantages but then then that see if you work hard you we can always cover up true 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 true, so, true. it's just you need to be you know you need proper guidance you have to be consistent with your routine and fitness it is a must like it's like i have also learned if you you know if you want to be a professional you have to train like a professional precisely precisely the the other day we we actually published an article on our website and to my surprise you know there are cricketers from england who have made national debut at the age of 45 oh, wow. yeah there's so many role models true 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 look up to there's no age correct correct amazing next question is from priyanka who is your favorite wicket keeper in the world cricket today my all time favorite was adam gilchrist but i think presently i think um, i really like ms ms dhoni okay lovely uh next question is from neil who do you love to keep the most spinner or a fast bowler so i think um, spinners also i think it's very difficult hmm. it's a tough job but i feel um, i think it's more challenging to when you keep a pace that to uh, when you come up Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it's quite challenging, and uh, I love challenges. So I think on the stump surface. Okay, amazing. Uh, next question is from Shashank. I think the second last question. Uh, you have been very flexible with your batting position so far. Which one do you enjoy the most? Uh, opening the innings or coming in the middle order? I will bat wherever my team requires me to bat. Okay. So in terms of batting, I think. I really don't mind batting in any order as long as I'm helping the team. I think that's that's more important, right? That's very important. Yeah, that's more important. Not what I like. <laughs> that's that's. I think that's not important because I think when you're playing for the country, uh, your team matters. Yeah. Like everything matters. It's not an individual sport. True. So true. That's why I will bat wherever my team requires me to bat. Okay, amazing. Uh, next question is from Siddesh. One thing that you like and don't like about post-match conferences. <laughs> <laughs> like and I don't like. Acha. What I like is uh, that uh, of course you know if you do well you know they appreciate and you mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. you can actually tell you know how you actually felt mm-hmm. during that. What I don't like is. Uh, press conference i think they exaggerate too much and i think sometimes when they get too much personal hmm. Hmm. sometimes they, they do get okay um, okay so to talk about the you know, so when they get too personal i think that's hmm. okay it's a little awkward too you know <laughs> okay okay has has it happened with you then no so far it's not yeah. no no but i now i have started attending so i think i might face it yeah uh next question next question is from sangeeta ma'am uh she is a cricketer herself uh, her question is when you started there were a lot of contenders for wicket keepers in the indian side uh, so what made you still stick to wicket keeping so um uh, i've never thought of contenders uh, i took to wicket keeping because as i said that you know it's in my blood my father is a wicket keeper yeah. and it comes from family 
so it was something that i naturally took to and as far as competition is concerned mm. in any kind of profession that we are in uh, there is always competition True. but uh, i actually always try to you know think about bettering myself and improving myself because that is the only thing that is in my control correct yes being a keeper you know it's, it's not an easy task yeah. like you have to put in a lot of hard work and yeah. you have to be very very sincere about your fitness yeah. uh, but i guess uh, when you're passionate about something it hardly feels like hard work true true uh, because you're doing the thing that you love to do the most and which is wicket keeping for me so yeah. amazing amazing lovely uh, i'm done with the questions and uh, uh, it was great knowing your journey in tanya uh, so much to learn for each and every one for a budding cricketer uh, to a senior cricketer because with the sincerity and with the honesty that you spoke and told us about your journey uh, i'm sure there are so many girls listening this podcast will take encouragement from this and sort of uh, you know pick up the bat get herself enrolled in the academy and start playing cricket you also the very new journey uh, there's so much that you still have to achieve and still have to uh, you know conquer in, in the cricketing space and we wish you all the very best for for everything that you do going going forward i know i think mean, it's just a milestone yeah. but the best thing is uh, like i've evolved as a player and i think uh, the confidence i have now It will only get better every game. So, True. You know, thank you so much for your kind words, and it was you know lovely sharing my experience with you. And I urge all of you know all of you, uh, be it at what whatever age, but I think you should if you really love the game. I sh- I think you should just stick to your instincts and just go for it. I I think that's a very straightforward message. And as far as your game is concerned, we all have seen how you have evolved over the years. and and we really appreciate that tanya the hard work that you have put in so keep up the good work uh, so that we see more of tanya bhatia and more of your exceptional stumpings in the days to come i i really hope you know it it actually inspires a lot of people out there who actually look up to cricket women's cricket and me once again vishal thank you so much for having me on your podcast so i hope you enjoyed the super fun chat with tanya bhatia and got to know about her cricket journey and if you did you know that real my dear friend follow us on spotify google or apple podcast for more such interesting unheard and lesser known stories from the world of women's cricket see you soon in the next episode